Hey guys, it's Jenny with Art for Good. So today I am super excited to show you how I created this three piece art installation that I did for an office building. And I have not done any kind of commercial art before and usually the art that I do is super colorful and playful and I wasn't sure how that was gonna to translate to an office setting. So. I uh, created this piece in hopes that it would bring some color and movement to the space, but still be a little bit corporate looking, so to speak. So hopefully I achieved that uh, and I'm excited to show you how I did that. So let's get started. So I actually sketched out this piece very quickly. I don't usually sketch or do a paper sketch of my pieces, but when I'm working with something this large, it just felt like I needed to uh, map out sort of where the colors were gonna go and uh, also use a pencil really quickly to kind of translate that drawing onto the canvas. So I knew which sections I wanted to be what color. So we're getting started here with uh, the yellow portion and I wanted it to specifically look like there was light hitting this sort of middle segment. So in order to achieve that, I worked from sort of light colors at the top towards dark colors at the bottom. So I'm using a cadmium yellow here, and I'm also going to put in some burgundy. This is a burgundy color that I kind of mixed on my own using uh, burnt sienna and a dark purple color. So the goal for this is to really create each piece or each segment of the painting separately and allow it to dry in places so that the colors do not mix together. I really wanted a separation of, you know, the light colors from the darker colors below. And this was the best way to achieve that is to let certain sections dry. So as we go, I'll talk through which sections I am letting dry and when. So I'm going in with a, a darker magenta here and a light magenta, just as that middle color in between the yellow and the burgundy. I did speed up this video slightly uh, just so that, you know, it was a couple of hours of work and I wanted to condense it down and got it down to at least uh, under 20 minutes. So that to me felt like a, a good achievement. I'm adding in some pre-mixed gold in here also, just because I had that on hand and I thought it would help it with the sheen a little bit. I'm also adding pre-mixed white. This is a white from my friends at Hippie Crafter. If you are not aware of them, it's great products and I have a link in my description below to uh, a discount you can receive if you're interested in checking them out. So now I'm using a palette knife and I am just swiping. I'm not as really looking to get cells. If you're interested in sort of the swipe technique to get cells, I have a video here that I'll link to that kind of tells you the basics of how to get cells in your swipes. I'm using a quick paper towel to swipe because I figure that was a little faster than using my palette knife. Using a paper towel, especially one that's been dampened a little bit with a spray bottle of water, is a great way to get cells. Just giving it a quick torch to help the cells form. I also realized that I went a little bit outside of the line that I had drawn, so I'm just gonna take my palette knife and scrape. It's not a huge deal if I don't get all of it off. I just want to make sure that I have a good frame of reference for where I want the next section to go. So this is the best way to do that. You can always just paint over sort of dried acrylic if it gets outside the line, so to speak. 
So now I'm going in to create cells where I want them. I want it to be very strategic in this piece. So I am dipping a skewer in coconut hair serum. It's a very specific brand and type of hair serum. So I will link to the one that I use below. And it is really great with creating cells. And it's a little difficult to see here as the camera is a little far away, but the cells are starting to form. Plus it smells really great. I'm just saying, it smells like coconuts, it's lovely. Now, because I'm working with coconut hair serum or any kind of oil, if you use silicone oil in your paintings to achieve cells, um, I am going to, once it's fully been dried and cured, I am gonna have to remove that oil. Otherwise, it's gonna look oily on the surface of some portions of the painting. So to do that, I have a video here that kind of gives you a little bit of a tutorial. You can do that using uh, rubbing alcohol and a cotton pad. Um, but again, check out this tutorial if you're interested in getting started with oil in your paint. All right, so I have not let this section dry. I'm going right in with to go into the bottom section. Because I'm swiping, I feel pretty comfortable with keeping this where it's supposed to be in this segment. You can let it dry if you want, just to make sure, but um, I wanted to sort of get started with at least this next layer drying, because as you know, or you may not know, with acrylic paint pouring, it can take several days for a layer to dry. So I wanted to kind of get a jump on getting at least two layers in. So here I'm using again some uh, purple, like a purple color uh, in two different types of purple. I feel that kind of blends a little bit with the burgundy on the bottom, but you can still see I'm leaving that nice dark shade there on the bottom of the first segment to create dimension. I'm adding in aqua and I'm adding in a metallic cobalt as well. I will put the exact brands and links to all the products I'm using in the description below, so don't worry about having to try to rewind or uh, go back to this video where you see I reference certain products. I'll put it all there for you. I'm just using my palette knife again, and just no rhyme or reason, I'm just really covering that section that I laid out with the pencil. I want to kind of blend the colors together because that's what makes it pretty neat once you do the cell portion because the different colors show through uh, via those little cells and this is the only way to do it is by sort of layering colors and swiping or another way to get uh, these what they call chameleon cells is to do a, um, a dirty pour, they call it. So you just put a bunch of paint in a cup, you flip it over and you can essentially, or I guess it should be called a flip cup, but essentially you can let that sort of go over the whole canvas and then you can use your uh, hair serum and create really cool looking cells. I do have another video on how to do this in particular that I will link to here if you're interested.
Now I'm just making sure I have all of the pieces covered and the sides as well. All right, so I'm going in now with my skewer and adding in cells in this layer also. You can see now at the top, the paint has had a chance to absorb that oil and create some really cool looking cells and texture. So now I'm going in with my bottom layer, and this is 50% phalo blue and 50% uh, ivory black. And I've mixed those two together to create kind of a dark navy color. And I'm just gonna do the bottom section all one color here, um, just to, again, put give the eye somewhere to focus when you're looking at the painting, and that is that beautiful, colorful, sort of swipe in the middle, as well as the different transitions. You have to be careful with the type and, or the brand and type of black you use. I have found when I use certain brands for black, it gets a little tricky with the black eating up the paint. So I have switched to an ivory black color and that has made all the difference. It doesn't seem to want to eat up all the colors like a Mars black does. Okay, so now I've just added some primary blue here in this middle segment, just as a transition layer. Um, I And I'm gonna plan to swipe over the, this blue, the dark, colored blue so that when I do the chameleon cells in there, it'll give it some dimension. I can already see at the top how it's drying and how that white that uh, we added in at the top really helped make it look like the, there's light reflecting off of this uh, section. And that's exactly what I was going for. So I'm super excited to see that turning out. If you're using pre-mixed paints, sometimes it can be difficult to um, do this, what I'm doing, it, we're for smoothing out the paint with my hand. And the reason for that is I don't find that the pre-mixed paints dry flat. They aren't as self-leveling as the paints you mix yourself. So most of these paints here are paints that I have mixed myself with just really decent acrylic paint and I'm using flow trawl as well as my pouring medium and some water. I have a whole uh, video on my specific recipe that I'll also link to here if you're interested. All right, so now I have got kind of swiped that dark blue over the light blue and I'm going in to do the cells in those areas.
Okay, so that piece has dried for at least one day. The top part of this painting is pretty dry. I still don't want to be touching the bottom pieces because it needs more time to fully cure, but I am going to start working on the top piece here. So I am planning to layer in some, it's kind of a grayish blue, and this actually matched the paint color that this office was going to be using in particular. So I wanted to tie that in a little bit so the colors look like they worked in the space, but I'm just going to do sort of alternating patterns of this blue. So it's going to go from dark at the bottom to light at the top. Again, that's the best way to mimic natural light is to work from dark at the bottom to light at the top. If you even incorporate that in your regular paintings uh, or abstract work, it just adds a really interesting dimension to it. And um, the human eye really picks up on that due to us, you know, being in nature and appreciating that. Uh, it's just a, a, one of my tricks that I like to use when I do uh, interesting compositions like this. So I'm going in for this middle layer with a slightly lighter blue. I am mixing these all myself. Most of it is a titanium white mixed with a tiny bit of phthalo blue and a tiny bit of ivory black to give it that gray color. And then I'm just going increasingly with more of a percentage of titanium white in each mixture that I'm using going towards the top of the canvas. As you'll see, paper towels are my friend in this creating this piece. Um, each time I am getting my glove um, in the paint, I just want to wipe it off so I don't get that inadvertently anywhere else. Okay, so I'm going in now with an even lighter color and I'm gonna reserve the space at the very top, a little semicircle for completely white paint. I wanted this to be pretty abstract so that people could, you know, make their own determinations. Is it a valley? Is it, uh, you know, an ocean wave? Is that supposed to be the sun at the top? Is this really uh, kind of a hole, you could say, that you're looking up and outwards for? That's what the beauty of art is. And I didn't have any particular uh, thing I was creating here. I just wanted to, again, create movement and color and I wanted to create something where the eye was sort of scanning across and kind of getting lost in those different layers. And I think ultimately that worked in this piece. All right, so now I'm going in with a straw because I wanted to sort of blur the transition lines ever so slightly. I didn't want it to look super concrete. And then I ended up just busting out my handy hairdryer to make it look even more uh, blurred. So it could be even looking up at the sky where those are clouds and different kind of layers of the sky. And I um, didn't want to be super exact with those transition lines. So this ended up working out really well um, to just give it a little more interest as well. All right, and this is the final piece again, uh, which you saw at the beginning. I did make a couple tweaks to this by hand. Um, I did add in some sort of black dots towards the bottom in the blue. 
Um, and I did also add in a couple other colors similarly in areas where I just, there weren't a lot of cells and interest and I just thought this was uh, a great added sort of bit of detail for the piece. So this, I'm gonna let dry for several days. I am going to do a fresh coat of my favorite varnish, which is Kamar varnish. Um, I have a video that I did on my favorite varnishes and how to do it that I will link to here as well for those interested. And then I'm gonna pack it up and ship it. So my next video, if you are not a subscriber, I would go ahead and subscribe now because I'm gonna be doing some upcoming videos on how to pack and ship your art so it arrives at its destination quickly. And I have some other videos here of interesting pieces that I've created using what I call a cake pan to create similar type pieces that are circular motion and bright and colorful. So if you're interested in that, here's a playlist for you that you can continue to watch here. That's all the time I have for today. I will definitely see you next time. If you have any questions about how I created this, just let me know in the comments below. See you next time.